well, you're not eating today, but I, I feel like there's a midget hanging off of my chest, <laughs> like slowly strangling me, weakly, limply. Like, Mitch Hedberg style. Yes. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I got to cut my head again. Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. Tell okay. me that it doesn't sound a little delicious, maybe. I swear to you, I will walk out and leave your ass. Do you picture J.R. Ewing while you're having sex? I don't do anything but talk. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. <laughs> and this is the podcast. You're excited to be here tonight. Oh, I've had a crap day, man. Well, see, it's good. We can retreat into the our headquarters here. Two guys, our one cave. Yeah, our, it's the it's the pod cave. That's what. Oh, it is. Oh, the pod cave. Nice. Yeah, we don't have nearly any cool shit like he does. No, we, yeah, where's our giant penny? That's what I want to know. No, I just I just wanted a Batmobile, man. <laughs> You're like fuck the. Yeah, I don't care about the penny. The trophies. I'm looking for the technology, jackass. Like, where's the bat computer? Then we would never make mistakes because we could Google it on the. Or we, we could still we Google could, it. Well, yeah, that's true. Two supercomputers, and we record on a computer too. Hey, you said uh, real quick before we do anything else. You said that you had a word of the day. Let's do the Urban Dictionary dot com word of the day. We're gonna put it on the dollar. All right then. YOLO. Uh, YOLO. Uh, you only live once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a good one. I'd never heard it before. Really? Really. This is a phrase that's so out there, it's on bracelets at Walmart now. Really? Yeah. Man, that's fair. I looked it up. Uh, I, I was looking for a word of the day yesterday, so I guess this is the word of yesterday. I was looking it up, and I was like, oh, YOLO, that's pretty... I never heard of it before. We'll we'll use it. I think that's something we could both work into conversation. Sure. I mean, why not? YOLO. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> We're still discussing it. Trying to sneak it in right off. I actually had a discussion about YOLO the other day with someone. It's it's the poor man's carpe diem. It's like, it's, it's the idiot's carpe diem. The gangsta's carpe diem? Like I said, the idiot's carpe diem. I think, I think Scarface would still probably go carpe diem, not YOLO. You know what I mean? And, and nobody would argue that Scarface wasn't gangsta with a A at the end of it. Anyway, all right, YOLO is the UrbanDictionary.com word of the day. Let's see if we can fit that into conversation. It says something about how long we've been doing the show. I've now been sick twice during it. I don't get sick. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. I've been sick twice since we've been doing the show. You haven't been sick once. Healthy, like, healthy genes, man. Healthy <laughs> genes. Whatever. I mean, when I turn 50, I'm going to have like four heart attacks, so <laughs> I'm just saving it up. I got a honey bun story I got to tell you. Of course. Fantastic. I thought about you using the term honey bun. What? Because a honey bun has an expiration date. <laughs> yeah, it's a long fucking time <laughs> though, isn't it? Because it's, it's so... It's hey, so, I just... It's overprocessed and it's sealed in a bag. Just a, just a thought. You, I mean, that was the name you chose for... Actually... You know, way, way back. Uh, that's true. But that's, I didn't even choose that name for someone. Honey bun is like my favorite sweet and I drink a tremendous amount of Diet Coke. A f- one of her friends described her. She said, you are the honey bun to his Diet Coke. And I thought that was really cute. And so I started calling her honey bun, like a little bit in like in person, just as a term. Does she of call you Diet order. Coke? No, no. Mm. We have used it, though, like I've used it in like a text message or an email or something to her sometimes. Honey bun told me this story. We, we, she was using the wrong key to try to get in my apartment the other day. And uh, she referenced this story. And I was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I don't know. I've never heard that story. She was like, I've never told you about my uncle. Honeybun uh, was married before. Yes. Okay. And her husband passed away. Her husband had an uncle who also passed away pretty tragically. Like one does. Yeah. I mean, I mean you not know, necessarily tragically, but. but. But people do. Sometimes people die too young. This guy did. Uncle, I don't know what to call him. Uncle. Dead yeah, guy. Yeah, uncle dead guy. All right. Fair enough. Uncle Dead Guy. Really? That sounds so... Un- that sounds so callous. Yeah. Well, I don't know the guy. He's third third removed from me. You know what I mean? All I know him as is this story. This was really Honey Bun's last interaction with him, though, before he passed away. She told an abbreviated version of this story at the funeral, actually, like as from the dais or whatever, at the All platform. Right. So Uncle Dead Guy really liked to hunt. He had a camp. 
like about an hour away from here. Right. He it's lived, not unusual. Right. He lived about two hours away from here. Okay. And uh, this one particular Friday afternoon, he called Honey Bun up and said, hey, I'm going to go up to the camp this morning. When I get done, can I stop at your house and take a nap for two or three hours before I, before I got to go to work? I got to go to work this evening. And I'm just going to go drive straight in from there, but I want to I want to crash for a little while. Yeah, because I mean, couch. you got to get up, you got to get up, right. you know, to break it down. Exactly. So she was like, "Yeah, yeah, no wor- no worries, uh, but nobody's going to be there. You got to stop by and get my key from the office." And he said, "Okay, cool." So he swung by, you know, middle of the day that day, picked up the key from her. She was like, "You remember where the house is?" Yeah. Okay. Excellent. He he drove on to the house then. Now, you know, there's several places, and this is a college town. There's several places in this town where there's sets of duplexes like all built together yeah you know duplexes all in a row maybe 10 or 15 units identical houses little villages exactly she lived at the time her and her husband lived in one of these uh duplexes more like a don't plex more like a don't plex exactly i think you can get some idea where the story's headed obviously the guy went to the wrong place so uncle dead guy goes on to the house Everything goes fine as far as Honeybun knows. Honeybun gets off of her shift. She heads home. She gets to her house, and Uncle Dead Guy's truck is not in front of her house. Mm. She looks around three units down, so two full buildings down. There's Uncle Dead Guy's truck. She's like, what the hell did he do? Well, Uncle Dead Guy's a crazy country motherfucker. Perhaps he got there, thought it was the house, couldn't get his key in it. He was like, fuck, I don't know where they live, and just fell asleep in the truck was just like, I'll just crash here for 15 minutes or an hour or whatever. So she goes over to knock on the window. There's nobody in the truck either. She turns and eyes the door suspiciously <laughs> in front of her. She's like, nah, nah. So she goes back to her place, opens the door. There's no Uncle Dead guy in the living room. Goes to the bedrooms. There's no Uncle Dead guy in the bedrooms. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that anybody's been home all day. The dogs are freaking out like nobody's been there. Right. Whatever. She closes her door and walks back over to the neighbor's house where Uncle Dead guy's truck is parked. Very tentatively, she knocks on the door. <laughs> From inside, she hears, Come on in! Swings the door open. Uncle Dead Guy is sitting in his boxer shorts with his feet up on the coffee table, a beer propped on his belly, watching Animal Planet on the on the big screen TV. In somebody else's house. Yeah. She says, Uncle Dead Guy, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he says, I'm just drinking a beer, baby, watching some Animal Planet. What? Oh, should I put on pants? I'm sorry, I was napping. I just got up and started watching some tube, you know? She says, this is not my apartment. How the fuck did you get in here? He says, what do you mean this ain't your apartment? Well, shit, I thought this stuff looked like new stuff. I didn't recognize any of it. But, I mean, the key worked in the door. She said, the, the door must have been unlocked. Uncle Dead Guys, don't, we've got, wh- how long have you been here? He was like, since I left you, since I left your office, so we're talking about like three hours. This dude's been hanging out in the living room of this apartment. Nobody's there. It's the middle of the day in a college town. I'm assuming the people who lived there were at school. It's not uncommon for people in the South not to lock the doors. Turns out the key fucking worked, man. It was no the way. same. Yeah, it was the same key from her house, two, three doors down. Uh, so she's so she's sitting there in the living room. She's like, how what how do we handle this? She's like, I don't. Do we just do we just sneak out and leave she's like well what did you do when you were here he's like baby i peed in the toilet i you didn't have any beer in the fridge so i ran down to the quickie mart bought a 12 pack she said how many have you drank all of them there was a 12 pack of empty beer cans in the trash can they just leave it they just leave it they clean they took the trash bag out put a new trash bag in why because she was like i don't know what to do we're just not going to tell them they locked the door. They they made sure the toilet was flushed. You know, the whole nine yards got back to the house. So they get back to their apartment. She's still freaking out. She's sitting there. She's he, she's she's like, I don't. He says, honey, I got to tell you, I really am glad to know that that wasn't your place. She says, why? He says, well. Well, because the 18 inch dildo in yeah. the corner. <laughs> no, no, there wasn't anything like that. I wouldn't have he left. Said, he said, I got that. <laughs> He said, I got there, looked around. He said, but when I looked in the kitchen, there was six yellow roses on the kitchen table. And I thought to myself, that cheap bastard can't buy her a full dozen. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it was, her, it was the husband's uh, uncle or whatever. So he, that was his big thing is that he was mad at him for uh, not only, uh, only buying her six roses. Well, because he was on the, whoever bought him was only half sorry. Right. This story happened years ago. I mean, 
if, like five, six, seven years ago, something like that. Honey Bun tells it to me the other day. The, the kicker for me, though, the way she was talking about it, I was like, why? You act like it's still, this is still a secret. She's like, yeah, I never told the people. She never fucking came clean to the other people that, hey, you're, the key works, the same key works. There's still a place in this town you and me could go sneak into if we lived right down the street. Oh, there's lots of places I can sneak into. <laughs> uh, I would make these people go crazy. Move their stuff. Yeah, day by I would. Day. I'd want them to think like their house was haunted and stuff, and them just just completely fucking lose it, not be able to sleep anymore. They gotta drop out of school. They end up in the nut house. There's a straight to TV movie made about it. Like I would pick a picture and just keep knocking that that picture down. Yeah, and I would I would hope that it's a picture of somebody who's dead. <laughs> So they thought like Great Aunt Edna was haunting them. Yeah, like if there's a picture of like a grandpa up, I'd keep putting his picture down. That's not for me, sir. Why not? Yellow baby. Ding 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 ding. Winner winner. Uncle Dead Guy Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Uh, we've got one mistake that I want to mention. <laughs> They're admitted to a mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. It's from a long time ago, actually. Oh, all right. I can't even remember what episode this was, but it's a vindication on my part. Pizza eggs is a thing that exists, sir. Since we're throwing away shit that happened back in the day, tar balls is a thing. Uh, yeah, we've established. You're right. Oh, we haven't talked about no, that, No, we haven't. Yeah, I wasn't going right. to bring it up. We got, uh, what? I got a I got a email from uh, a member of the military. Right, one of yep. my one of my buddies from high school. He said, "Yeah, we we haven't gone over this." No, and even if we had, it's not like I don't want to hear it again. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, you're right. He says we had tarballed private first class stinky man uh, because <laughs> stinky nuts <laughs> because he was stinky man in the barracks, and also he was an asshole. Apparently, it's pretty common in the military. This was the first time that I had ever heard or seen it. So, yeah, and that wasn't the only one. There were a couple of other emails. People were like, yeah, it happened in high school. It happened yeah. in college. It happened in the military was the most common one. But we did have – you're right. Okay, so fair enough. Some vindication there. Vindification? Vindication. Vindication. Vindication is a that's, – that's a whole other level of vindication. No, it's just not a word. Oh, okay. Honey Bun is actually the one that found this one for me too. She got curious the other night because pizza eggs came up in conversation. Pizza you mean eggs, you brought it up in conversation? No. Uh, Miss Texas was in town, and uh, she mentioned it. She had she had mainlined like six of the episodes, seven right, of the episodes Right, but she mentioned it referencing y you saying it. Yeah, she was saying what an idiot I was. She was right. like, oh, pizza eggs isn't I a thing. I agree. And, and I defended myself as I have before. I said, nah, I swear it was on a TV show maybe, and I mentioned weeds. And sure enough, it is. It's in the very first episode of Weeds. They talk about the dad who passed away. Judah is the guy's name in the show. He used to make them pizza eggs. And he would, like they'd have the leftover pizza from the night before. He'd cut it up really small with scissors and then threw it in, throw it in scrambled eggs. I got recipes for that shit. We'll post those on the uh, website. TwoGuysOnePod.com. Probably. No, there's not. Anyway, let's move on with the show. <laughs> on to more shit that doesn't matter. We got... Hey, this matters a lot. We got a lot of great listener feedback. JaVale! JaVale is here! Woo! How's this that week. how's that groveling feel? Do you feel vindification? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I feel a lot of vindification. Uh, first off, Cronkite checks in with his art form. He says if we're allowed to count martial arts, and you and I agreed yeah, anything, anything that you yeah. do well enough can be an art form. Uh, definitely martial arts. He's his Krav Magra. He'd be the greatest Krav Magra martial artist in the world. I don't even know what that is. It sounds badass. It's the little brother to Quick Draw. What is Quick Draw? Magra. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. Nice. If if we weren't counting martial arts, though, he would want to be Bobby Badfingers. Are you familiar with Bobby Badfingers? Yeah, he's like he's like. The world's fastest finger snapper. Oh, okay. I was going to say thumb wrestler. No. This guy is really something. I had to look him up today. I'd never heard of him. YouTube, there'll be a link again, twoguysonepod.com uh, this week. Bobby Badfingers is the world's fastest finger snapper, and I am amazed. It's it's completely useless. It's awesome. <laughs> if he uh, 
if he ever owed me money, I would just break his thumb. <laughs> You're such a bastard. Like the one thing that guy that, earns off of. <laughs> that's it. Look, give, give me my money or fuck which, you. Which, by the way, okay, so he's famous for being the world's fastest finger snapper. If you go to bobbybadfingers.com, it's a series of videos, and it's all the exact same performance from him given on these weird talk shows all over the world. Like the first one is like America's Got Talent or whatever. But then he's on some Mexican morning show, and then it's like a bunch of Spanish, and they're like, blah, 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 back and forth. And then all of a sudden he's like, Bobby Bedfinger, and then da, 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 he's snapping. And then he's on like a Japanese game show, and it's stupid human tricks or whatever. There's a lot of Japanese conversation, and then suddenly he's snapping his fingers. It's pretty fucking funny. I'd be down with being Bobby Badfingers, I think. All it, right. It might even be, that's a that might be a Guinness World Record that I'd would be really proud of completely useless can't make you very much money that tickles my fancy yeah robert bad fingers just doesn't have the same ring to it no it doesn't you got to be bobby bad yeah <laughs> he of many names like clockwork sir we ask and, and he provides i originally learned about origami from an episode of reading rainbow i saw at school when i came home i immediately told mom that i wanted to learn origami Mom was talking to my sister. She must have mixed up my name with my immediate older brother. My sister sends him a book on origami and me something stupid that I don't even remember now. I've always been fascinated by origami, but the only thing I learned to fold was a box. I do know the name of the man considered the grand master of origami, so the guy that you'd have to take the place of. His name's uh, Akira Yoshizawa. He died in 2005. So I guess he's not the current record holder as as the grand master of origami, but he's the guy that you would be uh, compared to. No, he would be the guy compared to me. That would be compared to you. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he's no other guy. I'm not even sure if you could be a grand master of origami anymore. Mathematicians have already cracked most of the secrets. Most origami now is simply done by computer design. Um, and he actually references, there's a, a really cool TED Talk that explains... What he's talking about here, right? But computer is still computer design is an art form. Yeah, but I think what he's saying is it's it's literally all about calculations at this point. So like it's it, there's there's no there's no originality that you can create out of out of paper structures anymore because the like the computer can just crunch it. And so make you're it saying happen. so you're saying paint by numbers isn't an art form? I don't think so. That's crafts. So crafts aren't an art form. My friendship bracelet that I made you in 98 is not an art form? We didn't even know each other in 98. I don't think... No, I don't think it is. I think it's crafts. I think it's a separate thing. You said you said last episode cleaning a toilet could be an art form. Anything at a high level could be an art form. And now you're taking it back. No. Stop being so wishy-washy. No, because there's not... While there is a standard way, quote-unquote, to clean a toilet... There's not a numbered set of rules. With a paint-by-number set, to do it at its highest level is to do it the same every time. And everybody would do it the same. Like, there's not... Is there an art form to, to completing a puzzle? Look, man. Like a friendship bracelet. Maybe the way they do ties and knots is different and cool. Okay, but a friendship bracelet... Okay, so but what you're talking about doing with a friendship bracelet would be to take it out of craft and turn it into an art. If you show me somebody that's doing that with with the shrinky doodles or, or paint-by-number sets, yeah. find me one, and I'll be open to the idea. Right now, I'm saying that I think those two things, where it's literally, where there's just a recipe for it, and you just you take this and apply it to that. Take one and f- take you know, like baking a pie. That's an art form. Yeah, but that's the ones that do it well. The ones that we would say are artists aren't doing it precisely the same way as any recipe. They've got their own thing that they do. You know what I and mean? And maybe the one paint by numbers ain't either. And I'm open to that if you find me that. I'm saying I've never seen it. And I've seen it in all of these other things that we're discussing. That's all That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you can't you've seen, be right. You've seen somebody clean a toilet that you're just like blown away and you're like, that's art. I've seen a janitor that maintained a building in a way that... Was efficient? Not just efficient, but was noteworthy. Like I was like, that's a man who has pride in his job at a level that I don't think most people in any field do. And the fact that he was doing it as a janitor really impressed me. I would say, I would say, yeah, that dude was cleaning toilets at an art level. Look, man, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I'm almost positive you're wrong. You're probably right. 
We got a, an email from the Huckster. He says, I just want to give y'all a shout out. Say, I love the show. I'm usually too apathetic to make an effort at reaching out, but thanks for making me laugh and dropping some culture for me to pick up. I caught up on some shows on a recent trip. That's something we've heard from a lot of people. They, they you know, go out on a road trip and, and listen to us for six hours at a stretch. I don't know about you, but that tickles my funny bone to, to think that people are like mainlining me into their earlobes. I got a name for this guy. The Huckster? Yeah. All right. The Debtless Wonder. The Debtless Wonder? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, he doesn't have any debt, right? No debt. Zero debt this guy has. Uh, did you know this guy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know this guy. And he has a comic book collection that is over 17,000 comics. That's impressive. Yeah, he, okay. He's the debtless wonder. He just spent two grand on four comic books yesterday. Shit. He's also a grown-ass man. Uh, yeah, obviously, as the next line would say. Uh, I caught up on some shows on a recent trip. Thanks for making it bearable. Wife plus six year old plus ten month old plus six hours equals soul destruction. <laughs> you saved my soul uh, and the lives of my family. Uh, he also asked if I could randomly give the other guy five across the eye. Just curious how he would handle random physical violence against his person. Thanks again. Uh, and that is from the Debtless Wonder. Thanks for checking in. Appreciate you uh, listening to us on the road. Yeah, and I'm. I'm a I'm a lover, not a fighter, man. I me too. I, him asking me to do physical violence to you is the wrong way. Like it's possible at some point you could be coaxed into hitting me for some reason. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. that wouldn't take much. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I got good news for you too. Oh yeah, she who shan't be named. We oh yeah, did we get a follow up? We did. I'm so stoked. Like I, I had I'm. On pins I'm, and needles. Yes, you I'm shaking. I'm so excited. Like a little girl. It's yeah. awesome. Okay. I listened on Monday, and I've got to say that it was pretty cool to hear you guys read my letter. I didn't catch the irony of my name until the third time you said it. Uh, too funny. Thanks for that. She names her boyfriend here, by the way, and I like her code name Lord Noncommitter. Oh, that's a good name. That is a good one. Lord Noncommitter and I did talk on Monday and Tuesday. Ooh, a two day talk. Yeah. Uh, I think it went well. We're still not labeled as anything, which is fine, because we're working towards couplehood. She says, and those were his words, not mine. That was the way that he de described it. She also answers your question about Facebook statuses. Her Facebook status says single. Ooh. His says nothing. It's, it's like mine was. It doesn't. He's just got it turned off altogether. I think that's the classy thing to do, at least. Well, she, I mean, she should turn hers off, too. She should. They should both be the yeah. same. Yeah. She that's, should turn... Honey Bun turned hers off yeah. once we started getting involved. Well, because I'm sure there's people out there that she's known in the past who Facebook stalk. Right, who are interested. And then could start, you know, sending you messages that may be Captain Noncommittal. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord Noncommittal. I like Captain Noncommittal better. Captain Noncommittal. It rolls. You, you like alliteration. Yeah, I like the double consonant alliteration. All right, there you go. Captain Noncommittal. You know, if he could s see those things that may cause you problems in the future. She says she's fine with sticking with him for now, as long as... <laughs> like, like, what did she say? Is that, I'm fine no. with sticking with him? Uh, well, she, yes, I'm fine with sticking with him <laughs> as long as... Like, I, know, I know. As soon as something better comes along, I'm hey, gone. That's That was my suggestion, right? I was like, eh, just wait, just look for something better is my thing. Like, but there's no reason to run feel, off from this dude. I feel like he's a, I feel like he's, you know, a wall in her living room, and she's like, ah, I really don't like blue, but I'm too fucking lazy to paint it green. I haven't found an awesome gray yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. Uh, I'm just too lazy to paint. I'll stick with it. She says, I, I don't mind... I don't. I'm. I'm fine sticking. I'm fine with sticking with him as long as we're on a path to somewhere. No matter how much fun we have together, I don't want it to be a waste of either of our time. Who knows what will happen? I think that he's worth the gamble, and he says that he feels the same way. That's something. Other guy, thanks for the advice and the laughter. I knew a question like that could be an easy target. I was trying. Yeah, I wasn't going to be mean. And no, it's. It's. I thought you handled it really well. One guy, things sound uh, great with your lady, so that gives me a bit of a bit of hope. Since it seems like they both kind of started the same way. Be nice to her. Ha! <laughs> Once again, I love the show, and I'm almost caught up. I haven't. I've got episodes three and six left. Big. That's pod, odd. Big. I know, right? Big podcast love. Oh, she you know why named. six is six? Yeah, six is the that's the masturbation episode. Yeah, six is the masturbation episode. I had um, my first roommate. 
She lives in Arizona now. She's been listening. She when she got to six, she she text messaged me and she said, "You have to cut down on the ball talk." <laughs> And I was like, where are you? Are you on you're on episode six? And she was like, Yes. I said, Okay. There's less ball talk later on. I was like, there's very there's very little ball. If you listen to the whole fourteen episodes, there's such a small amount of ball talk. It just gets even, heavy even for in, a short while. Even in that episode, there's it's only like a Yeah, it's it's like twenty minutes in yeah. a forty five minute, fifty, fifty minute episode or something like oh, that. Oh, maybe it's more than I remember then. <laughs> so it was a good long talk. We talked a lot about masturbation and, and balls. She said she skipped through some of the masturbation talk. She was like, I just couldn't handle you talking about that. She but she also did counsel us. She says, You've got to remember you have a lot of women listening to your show. And we do. We get a ton of, of feedback from That's ladies. That's weird, man. I why? We both have very pleasant voices. We are both very nice guys who treat ladies well, although we are very much manly men. Not always. Well, maybe on, not on both always accounts. in the past. Yeah. On both accounts. I haven't always been a gentleman, no. and you haven't always been a manly man. No, that's true. That's, that's true. It's <laughs> true. I haven't always been a gentleman either. But we but we try, and the general trajectory of our lives is one of being better guys than well, we were. I wonder if, uh, you know, back in the day whenever I, I was visiting the ladies, uh, I would read Cosmo. Because I knew, would you really? Yeah, because I knew girls were reading it. So you were trying to see where the where the female mind was, or who market what, research? Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Or what what the writers thought men thought like, right? Because whether that was true or not, that's what those girls reading it took as like the Bible, man. Yeah, and I could either play off of that, or right, or deny it, play against it. Right. Yeah. So I wonder if that's what it's like for a female listener of ours. Oh, if they're using the show like market research? Yeah. I don't think it would be a bad idea. You and I are, I don't think we're that off the norm. I, we're both weird, don't get me wrong. Everybody but is. Yeah. But I don't think we're that off the norm of the average guy in their, you know, late 20s, early 30s. And we've got, like, if you triangulate all the demographics that we fit in as far as, like, marriage status and family and, uh, you know, uh, uh economy et cetera, et cetera, economics all of those things yeah i think we cover a lot of bases i think we got a lot of ground covered in this studio were you were you looking for a socioeconomic socioeconomic there you go i saw you struggling over there i was, gonna, so I was gonna see where it went you were just waiting for me yeah. to drown over here and <laughs> not throw me a life raft yeah i was like how's you gonna get out of this one bastard now i discovered my 10th grade english journal the other day in a box at my folks house i cannot tell you how excited i was about it What's most likely going to happen is there'll be some things in there that will be easy to make fun of, and we can embarrassing. Yeah, we can embarrass yeah. myself, and we can talk about them on the show. It'll be good content. Dear journal, today yeah. I got my ass kicked in the locker room. Yeah, no. And my fucking friend just hid in his locker. Didn't help me. What a douchebag. There was none of that. Less likely, but also in the back of my head was maybe. You're a genius. Yeah, maybe it'll be. Maybe there'll be something brilliant. There'll be like a I was diamond ahead in of my the rough. time. Yeah, there'll be a diamond in the rough there, and I can take back and show as like, look what a fucking brilliant kid I was. It was it, there's there's it was not a diamond in the rough. It wasn't even easy to pick on and and useful probably for the show. It was a turd in a three ring binder. That's what it was. I mostly bitched about having to write. It was one of the, like, we had to do five minutes of free writing every day when we came into English class. That was, that's Miss Johnson wants me to write, so I have to wait five minutes writing in you. you yes. Are, you are blue and you have three rings. Yeah, pretty much. And it, you know, it's like. And you are not a hobbit. I don't understand why we, I didn't, I, there's not even any, li, any literature mentioned in the damn thing, because apparently I didn't read that, I didn't read much that year. I, I was a big fan of, the Ann Rice books all throughout junior high and high school, and I referenced them once. Mostly, it was, it was the year that I got my driver's license. Like, I talk a lot about my car. I, I There's one incredibly misogynistic entry. Yeah, I'm just a bitcher and a whiner, mostly. It's really disappointing. That's how I feel every time I come do the show. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to read something, and I'm going to be like, it's par for the course. Uh, actually, I'm not going to read anything. Uh, well, <clears throat> all right. I'll read this. I may cut it out. You're you're super wishy-washy, this show. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to read it. All right. I'm anything's art form but that. No, but anything's art form but that. I'm a man that's open to new information. Indecision? 
New information. Open to infection is what I'm open to, apparently. Apparently. Ugh. All right. Uh, this is dated September 5th, 1996. This was right before my 16th and 15th birthday. Everything about China. I don't know that all, much. All on one page. Yes. In a paragraph. It's everything. not even, you see it, it's not even a full page. Ha- a three quarters of a page, yeah. China, it's summed terrible. up. So you were. I was 14. You, and, I was about to turn and, 15. And fascinated with communism even then. No, this was this was the that was, that was the topic given to me that day. This wasn't writer's choice. It was it, I was told to write for five minutes everything about China. Everything. So you're that passing you know the about buck. China. You're saying you were brainwashed to be a commie. I this teacher was I thought was a commie pig at the time because I was a I was a goose stepping I was a future young Republican is what I was at this time. Everything about China. I don't know that much about people from China. I do know, however, that it's close to Russia and is really big. I learned that from Risk. Uh, They have way too many people, and the government said they can only have so many children. I'm not sure if it's one or two, but if they have any more than that, they have to have an abortion. I don't think that was ever true, was it? Like, I mean, I think there were – they were denied – like governmental aid or something maybe for extra children, but I don't think they ever had an abortion law. I think that was just like ridiculous things that people said in the 80s, right? Yeah, because communism is bad. <laughs> yeah, like communists ate babies. Like I don't think communists really ate babies. I don't know. China, it's fucking big. <laughs> it's Way big. too many goddamn people though. Uh, I also didn't close my parentheses there. This, I, like the editor in me, is very disappointed with my spelling and and grammar. The Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese speak Chinese and make lots of electronics. I think sumo wrestlers come from there, but I'm not sure. I don't think Chinese speak Chinese, man. Yeah, they speak Mandarin, right? Yeah. Or there's another one that's also not. Just called Chinese. Right, I think there's like, like 50 dialects. Man. Mandarin and Cantonese or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Sumo wrestlers don't come from there either. That's Japan, right? True story. Yeah, okay. I was a fucking idiot. They live and work in pagodas. This is the one that I'm most ashamed of. This is how far I've come. Their eyes slant in the opposite direction from Japanese people. You did not fucking put that in there. But I'm not sure if it's up or down. The same man... Who pronounced that cat? That North Korean's name is Gook. Yeah, I think you slipped that in there on purpose. They're communist. Besides Cuba, they're the only ones left. Besides that, I don't really? know. Really? Yeah, that's what I said. Cuba and China, only commies. Yeah. Uh, they're a dying breed. Besides that, I don't know anything else about them, and I hope that five minutes gets here fast because I can't think of anything to write. So I guess we've just got to sit here. I hope this is over soon. I don't know anything else. That's pretty emblematic of the shit that I wrote. Not only were you pithy, you were stupid. Yeah. It's fucking ugh. stupid and racist. Yeah. Stupid and racist. Culturally unsound. What an idiot. And here's the here's the real stinker. Probably I think probably most tenth graders think that way though. No, yeah, I think you're right, uh, especially around here. I yeah. think that was – I was probably very open-minded if you took a poll of the 10th graders in that classroom at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was probably one of the most culturally sound, intelligent, and and well-rounded people Like somebody, in the room. somebody else in the class wrote down who gives a fuck about these greasy yellow slopes. <laughs> yes, who gives a – yes, exactly. And he, gets, and he gets an A? Yes, probably. Well, no, because like I said, we had the commie English teacher, right? This, that English teacher was a trip. She gave up smoking halfway through the year. She was a devout smoker, had smoked since she, she was in high school. She didn't give up that smoker voice, though, did she? No, and she did not give up the fucking attitude either. It was it was the pits when she gave up smoker, cigarettes. Hey, dude. smoking voices are sexy, though. Hers wasn't. She was she was a harpy. Mm. Ugh. Anyway, there's tales of a 10th grade one guy. Nice. Yeah. No, not really. Very disappointed in myself. Oh, I wish you would have started that with like, dude, check out how like fucking smart I was. Oh yeah, and you could have you could have knocked me down. Yeah, there was no. Once I read, I, I there was a little bit of that attitude in me before I read the first page, and after the first page, I was like, oh Christ, this is all going to be really really bad. Whenever you said that you found it, I went searching for my old journal. Yeah, and I found it. Yeah, and yours has like poetry and shit in it. Yes, and some of it's stupid too. Don't get me wrong. It's, all of it is. 
but at least yours is artistic. Like it's not like I think we had to, but I think I did it for class too. I think we had to write like a free verse, like a haiku. Oh, uh, something else. Because uh, all that's in it is a couple of poems and some recipes. Nice. <laughs> It was your poetry and home ec notebook. Yeah, apparently. Nice. Let's take off of that topic a little bit. Who was your favorite teacher? Or you and I kind of mentioned this the other day. We've we've got a teacher that we would both probably mention from college. But like, okay, go ahead and like you can pick one from high school and one from college. Or maybe even like one from high school, one from college, and one from life. Maybe you've got a mentor that you feel like is All right. very important. Uh, these, are, these are two pretty easy for me. One was my junior high geography teacher and like social studies and science. Like he taught us those things was the, it's the only teacher that I've ever, well, it's the only teacher in high school I ever looked forward to going to their class. Yeah. Like I was excited to go to their class. I couldn't wait for this class. And we did some, we did some cool stuff, man. Like for geography, he would put up like Europe or Africa and then all the countries you've drawn out on uh, like cardboard. Right. And we would have a dart tournament and each country would be a different worth different points. If you hit that country with a dart and you can name that country, you got those points. Nice. Yeah, man. I knew a lot of countries, man. And then at the end, like you like at the end of the week, whoever won got like ten bucks to take to like the uh they get a little candy store that they had in school for lunchtime. Oh, that's cool. Shoot off rockets. We we would go into the woods and look at different trees. You know, I mean we had to, uh, like a scavenger hunt. This guy, it was a guy? Yeah. He Obviously, he wasn't marking time as a teacher. He was there. He was involved, and he was interested in looking to get you interested in his subject. Yeah, and, and, and he was awesome. Like uh, this, uh, I remember this one cat in our class literally like read ahead and finished the entire science book like three months before school was out. Like He huh. read everything, took the tests in advance, like all, all that stuff. The kid was interested in, in fruit flies, right? Okay. I know, weird kid. Uh, so he got him fruit flies, and he had a little thing in uh, in class that he could study them, or you know, look under a microscope, or, or whatever. Like so, an AP class within his own class. Like yeah, that, yeah, that kid was advanced. Obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, super smart kid. By far the best high school and under teacher ever had. He's uh, I want to say he might be a state representative now. Actually, oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he did uh, amazing teacher. My favorite from high school was. <laughs> Once upon a time, she had been the cheerleading, like sponsor or whatever, the cheerleading coach. She wasn't that anymore by the time that I got there, but she still did. Like she was the debate coach, and she did mock trial when we created that, and she would do the quiz bowl. She was like the quiz bowl sponsor too. She was the civics teacher and the free enterprise teacher and the speech teacher. And she did was you also, goddamn? Did you have any other teachers <laughs> no, in high school? No. Well, I mean, we were a very small school. We were we had we had a principal and Mrs. Everything. Well, no, but I mean, like, if you were the chemistry teacher, then all you probably taught was chemistry, and maybe you taught like advanced math also, or you taught physics as well. And then if you were the biology teacher, probably all you taught was biology. But if you were the English teacher, you might have taught like three different Englishes, three different... So, like, you taught English to three different grades, and you also taught reading, or you taught a literature class, or you taught maybe a world geography class or something. All right. And, like, the civics guy also taught Louisiana history or, you know, whatever. That was her case. So she had a bunch of different classes that she taught over the years, and I had her for several different things, several different years. We never did, like, a school play, but we would put on skits occasionally. She was always the teacher that was responsible really? for Wait. that. Really? She wasn't, you really weren't putting on, on skits. She was just using you guys to work out her personal issues. Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. She put us in costumes and made us. No, no. One guy, you got to come at your, you coming home drunk. Yes. Let me see the drunkness in you. Now slap your wife. Yeah. No. <laughs> how do you, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> she was awesome. She really got me, she got me more okay with public speaking and with being in front of people. She got me very interested in American government, which is what I ended up I mean that was my second major in college so she was very influential to me definitely my favorite high school teacher and like you were saying that was the class I was always excited to go to was she attractive not at all oh, okay she was way old I like she might have been attractive at once upon a time but she was I think I say way old she was in her 
late 50s or or early 60s, you know, when I was 15. So All right. It was, oh, this was not a hot for teacher kind of situation. I only had one of those. One the entire time that I was in junior high or high school. It was one teacher, and I only had, like, had her for one class, and every guy in school had I had a couple. For her. Yeah? Yeah. I missed out on the whole hot for teacher thing. <laughs> so what about when you got to college? The teacher in college, while I'm picking them to be my favorite professor, isn't necessarily because of what they taught me academically. Yeah, and you and I do agree on that. It's a, yeah. one of our theater professors, a movement guy, and I. He, I mean, he's just he's a life guru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot, man. Um, I appreciated know, all of it. Movement, martial arts, how to treat your wife. He's not afraid to tell you you're a knucklehead when you're a knucklehead. Yeah, how to take care of your business, how to party hard, and enjoy your life too. Yeah, a ton of good literature that dude's turned me on to as well. You know, just a lot about responsibility and, and taking care of your shit. Yeah. Like yeah, a man, yeah. a man needs to take care of his shit. Yeah, he's very much. I mean, a father figure in that yeah. way. I think oh, yeah, not definitely. just to you and me, but definitely. I think he's the. Uh, besides, I look at the the people in my life. The man, uh, I think the man I respect the most is my father, and I think he would be. He'd be my number Probably two. Probably number two. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I'd agree with that. Yeah, he's a great guy. My freshman year, my advisor was a professor who'd been here. 25 years at the time, a poli sci guy, and was about to retire. He announced his retirement fall quarter. Uh, you know, I'm only going to be here this year, and then I'm moving on. I fell in love with the guy even before I started school here. Like, I, I, I came and met him at his office and signed up to take classes with him fall quarter. Since I knew he was retiring, I went ahead and loaded up and took every single class he took. he taught the entire my entire freshman year so i ended up with way too many poli size before i had ever taken english or math or anything else it was a terrible way to go to college i really enjoyed myself and i learned a lot from this guy he was he was like he was a political science professor but he was like like a dead poets society kind of guy he would quote from everything and he had read it seemed like every book in the world but not just books he would weave moby dick and a bob dylan song and the quran all into a valid point about american politics or even philosophy he was also a philosophy teacher the last philosophy class taught at this university by the way i took my freshman year of college that's how long ago it's been since they've had a fucking philosophy class here it's ridiculous anyway he was amazing and and the number one thing that I that I learned from him was he was a atheist, strongly believed that there was no God, and yet he had this super strict and central to his being moral code. And I thought those two things were incongruent. I thought really? Yeah. I it had never occurred to me. I thought if you didn't believe in a God, surely you must just be walking around killing people, doesn't right? Mean he doesn't have, doesn't stuff. mean he doesn't have a belief system. That's what he said too. He and and the way that he explained it, and it and it has meant so much to me over the years since then. He's like, if you think about it, if if you think that this is all there is, if if there's no afterlife, if there is no greater power, if there is no reward, then what happens here is even more important. And so I have to be not only as good a man as I can be myself. I have to try to make everybody else's life better too. That's the only thing that I can do. And it's it's what everybody should be doing. The, uh, we have to be nicer to each other in shops. Like we have to help the poor more. We have to make. He was just he was a really positive guy. And the idea that you could have that outside of a religious system had just never occurred to me at eighteen years old. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah. He's yeah. a good dude. So, if you had to describe yourself in one word, as you are now. What one word would you use to describe yourself? And then if you could use any word just to describe yourself and, and it was true. <laughs> so the genie came out of the bottle, but it's not three wishes. I just get to say one adjective. And 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 I will be yes. that adjective. Yes. Would it change what you currently are or would you just co- uh, keep it? You and I, You and I already talked about it on the way into the studio. There's a right answer to the second part of that question. The adjective that you use is rich. You say, I'm rich, and then you are rich. And then that doesn't take away from any of the positive things that you already are. It just helps grease the wheels on everything that you can do. But what would you say you are now? 
What, what would, would I say use? I am now? What one word would I use to describe myself? Because you got to think it's nobody looks in themselves and is honest enough to say the bad thing they are. I think very few people would. I think most of the people that would probably not the kind of people who would have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sad. <laughs> Another rainy day. <laughs> yeah. That, that dude doesn't want to hear himself talk for small 60 minutes. <laughs> I'm small. <laughs> Um, small, small what? You get a small penis, no minded. <laughs> small minded. But now um, that you mentioned penis. I, I don't, I would like to think, shit, I might say happy. Happy is what you describe yourself as? I might. Right now, I, I mean, I, sick at this very moment <laughs> is the way to describe me. But I, we said it at the beginning of the show, the general trajectory of our lives is to be better people than we have been. The general trajectory of my life over the past six months, year, year and a half, two years. Maintain? Has been, it's been, no. It's been one of, like, every day. Shit, I said it the other day. Every damn day is a golden day for me, man. Every day is a great day. It, and it really is. Like, I wake up every day now. I'm excited about what lays before me. My kids are growing by leaps and bounds, and, and I'm having a great time getting to know them. I'm really enjoying this so delusional, So delusional you so are. So delusional. You don't even have kids. I just keep letting you mention them on the air. Yeah, you, I've invented. The, they're, they're my other Tyler yeah. Durdens. I, I'm enjoying this podcast. I've got this great artistic outlet that has never existed in my life. And it's made me more creative, or at least made me say yes to more creative ideas. I've taken things through to fruition more than I have in the past. I'm, I'm happy in a relationship. I got a good girlfriend. I've got good buddies around me. You and me get to hang out with uh, our mutual friend on a regular basis. You got a, uh, a beautiful wife and a good home and your job's going good. Like I, people if in my somebody, life are doing well. So if somebody's like, hey man, happy. the color of your inner light is Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, happy little tree. Yeah, that's the color of your inner light. <laughs> Bob, Bob Ross. Ross. <laughs> I'm down with that. That dude had a Jufro like nobody's business. Uh, oh, yeah. It's fabulous. I would, um, the word that I think currently describes me okay. is approachable. All right. You are very approachable. Yeah, I think I'm a. You got a friendly face. Yeah, I'm, I'm an approachable guy. I think that describes me pretty well. The word that I would want to describe me is legendary. <laughs> I want to be legendary. You want, you want people to almost be uncomfortable coming up to you? Like, holy fuck. Yeah, it's the other, other guy. guy. Other guy's in the Shit. house. Yeah, I want to be the real life Bill Brasky. <laughs> Who the fuck is Bill Brasky? The, Bill, you've never seen the Saturday Night Live with Bill Brasky? I don't guess. They're all sitting at the bar and they're drunk, and he's like, "Bill Brasky's nine foot tall." I heard that Bill Brasky ate four cows in one setting. <laughs> Bill Brasky takes a shit and it turns into a toilet. Yeah, like I would be. I would be legendary. That'd be a pretty good one. You can make a lot of money with legendary. I want to be legendarily rich. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it whatever I wanted after that. That's a good point, I suppose. That's a good point. You could be like legendary. And the genie's like, how so? And see, I feel like that would be... Open to interpretation. I feel like that would be like a monkey's paw situation where like, if you leave it open like that, if you say, I want to be legendary, then you're legendary because... You know, your penis exploded. <laughs> or oh, very... because I had to make it smaller. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Legendary. I'd want to be legendary. If there was a genie, I'd want to be legendary. That's a good one. Daily. Uh, you know what? We're working on that every week right here at twoguysonepod.com. Sir. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's and the show. For those of you keeping score at home, other guy won. One guy, zero. Yeah, I gotta get a dollar. I got one. I got one. Excellent. Good. Yeah, write it on your own dollar. When it gets, when it, when, I mean, when we have enough of these, we'll take a picture of it. And Good deal. All right. Yeah, we'll post it. Doing it. Check us out online. You can stream the show, of course, two guys, one pod.com. All one word. T W O. Shit, I'm not going to spell it out. Two guys, one pod.com. You can email us, two guys, one pod at me.com. Send us your dear other guys or uh, answer us. What's your celeb confident? What's your celeb crush who turned on your manhood or uh, womanhood for that matter? Who? Yeah, we got all these female listeners. Who Who was your first celeb crush? Who's the first guy that you, they're all going to be like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, aren't they? It depends on the age. Brad Pitt, I think, for some people. Yeah, that's a good point. 
would latch onto him. Nineties Leo DiCaprio was very was very oh, hot I bet for a lot Leo, of ladies. Yeah, the, like basketball I bet that's diaries. A big one. My Leo. fucking sisters, man. Yeah, yeah, they're all Leo Leo ladies. Yeah, oh yeah. Hey, it, here's something completely. Well, it's internet stuff, and you can now support two guys one pod dot com by shopping at Amazon. If you go to two guys one pod dot com, there's a link. At the top of the page, called Tip Jar. There's links all in, in every one of the posts. You can click through that. Go ahead and do your shopping at Amazon. It won't cost you any extra money, but we'll get a little commission for sending them uh, their way. I buy almost everything off of Amazon. I know. You're a big fan. You got the Kindles and the whole nine yards. Yeah, you got to start using that shit so we can get a little kickback. My furniture and shit's come from Amazon. A lot of stuff in my house. Amazon's awesome, man. It's like no state tax in a lot of states. Yeah. I mean, and of course, you pay that at the end of the year like you're supposed to. Everybody owns up to that, but you don't have to pay it right away. And, you know, I, I don't. They ship that sh- shit like the next day, like right away. It's fucking awesome, man. Amazon.com. Anyway, check it out. Two guys, one pod.com. You can support the show they by need shopping. Because they need us pandering for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, this way, it doesn't cost you anything to do it, but you, what you're going to buy anyway, you're going back to school. Maybe you got to buy a new laptop or whatever. Order it through Amazon.com. Click through twoguysonepod.com first, and you can uh, send a few shekels our way. Subscribe in iTunes. Review the show if you like it. Uh, you or can, if you uh, don't like it. Or if you don't like it, for that matter. Yeah, we don't mind a negative review. Let us know what you think. Email us. Check out the Facebook page. We'll be back next week. And if there's a bit you'd like us to bring back, let us know. Yeah, bitch. Tell us what you want on the show. There's some more audio gold laid down in the studio. I feel like I won the gold. You may be getting the bronze i'm gonna get the bronze i'm gonna be fourth place honorable mention oh i'll get a certificate so sad (laughs) i got a lot of certificates in high school (laughs) perfect attendance (laughs) oh i was i never had perfect i never had perfect attendance too i've always believed in sick days you get a certain number of sick days for a reason (laughs) like that's your yeah that's the goal yes i want to max out my sick days yeah i want to take my last sick day about two weeks before the end of school and then have to suffer through sick 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 days are the high school equivalent of a 401k (laughs) like you want to match you you know what i'm saying like i mean they're they're giving me fucking 10 sick days i i gotta get them i can't leave them on the table they don't fucking roll over exactly exactly Uh, like in 10th grade i don't get 20 that's uh that's true for some people's work too (laughs) i'm not naming any names but i'm pointing hard at some dude that i know uh that's another show i'm one guy and i'm the other (laughs) yeah and this has been the podcast
Oh